Everybody in this room relates to mathematics, believe it or not, even in love. It's timely because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. This is how it will work in love. Here are a few examples of pickup lines mm -hmm. I found for you as takeaways. Hi, I hear you're good with algebra. Will you replace my ex without asking why? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like math? No, me either. In fact, the only number I care about is yours. <laughs> You're like the last pages of a back uh, of a math book. You are the answer to all of my problems. <laughs> I am not a mathematician. But I am a mathematician because everything I do comes back to mathematics. I'm speaking with my personal, from a personal experience and professional experience. My purpose tonight is to share with you my view of mathematics and apply a human dimension to it. I experienced the deep commonality between music and math to start my journey. I think you must be wondering right now, who is this Chinese lady speaking English with a French accent and a broken voice? Okay, I get that. First, I love my broken voice, okay? This is my sexiest voice I prepared for Valentine's Day. <laughs> and second, it's just a cold, I swear. <laughs> so born, of, uh, born in Paris of Chinese parents, I grew up in Beijing, where discipline is key. We learn to clean up the toilets, wash the dishes, and make dumplings, and draw Tiananmen Square at kindergarten. No kidding. And I had this dream. I had a dream when I was four. When I saw this beautiful lady, beautiful girl on TV, she was wearing, I would say maybe, I look at her dress, silver dress, as a kid, you know. And I wanted to become her. She was the soloist pianist. And with behind her, the big orchestra. I wanted to become this real princess on TV, for real. And it took me exactly eight years of sweat, perseverance, hard work, and passion to get there. Something few people knew about me during that period. I was an introvert and shy girl at school, passionate about music composing, and most importantly, I loved math in parallel. So math is much more powerful than just additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, fractions, percentages, algebra, geometry, and everything you heard or will hear tonight. Math is about finding patterns and representing those patterns with a language, making assumptions, cool stuff, you know. And I will make you realize tonight, tonight, that math is absolutely everywhere in our life as a foundation of our everyday life. Even for those who believe had nothing to do with math and suffering from math-related uh, anxieties or phobias, just like my mom, who used to had a lot of nightmares. I will take you to a fascinating dimension of math through my personal journey from music to finance to technology and innovation. 
we should take a human approach in math, and math becomes intuitive. Math, in fact, is a human language, and we all have the ability to understand it. Um, for example, symbols and the organization to form equations are the same in every country in the world. Math has its own vocabulary, grammatical structures, and precision in symbols, and is in constant evolution, just like other, any other languages. So now let's take a survey quickly. Who in the room studied math or is a mathematician? Okay, and among those mathematicians, who is also a musician? Okay. Okay, maybe the wrong sample of population here. <laughs> Too bad, it's okay. I'll get there. So maybe the next question is, have you ever wondered why so many mathematicians are also musicians? A quick search on Google. And maybe the most uh, appealing or the most successful real life example should be Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was also an accomplished pianist and violinist. During deep concentration on the math problem, Einstein would sit at the piano for hours and play for hours. And you know what? After a one week or two week period of random piano playing, Einstein emerged with the first working draft of the general relativity he later published in 1915. So let's pause and think for a second. This whole theory or invention emerged from a random piano playing. It must be a link between music and math. So I think the, for this specific um, example, the best combo between music and math is in the underlying theories. Musical pieces are, re are read much more like you would read math symbols. They are mathematical divisions of time. And the closest tie between math and music is patterns, again. So in math, we look for patterns to explain and predict the un unknown. And in music, we use a similar strategy to look for notes that are where or less familiar. So now, let's think about it. As we say, music is a universal language. But actually, if math underlies music, math is a universal language. Let me repeat this one. Math is a universal language. And we all started our journey learning it from some ways, at school, at home, or through music. <coughs> Sorry, I need some water. When I was interviewed after my concerto for piano at the age of 12 by journalists, I was asked um, what I would like to do with my life. That was a tough question for 12 years old. And they received the most unexpected answer. Something related to mathematics, I said. As I wanted to keep my passion for piano as a passion and focus on something else because piano was my best friend. So that's how I ended up in finance. Do you know why this finance-math relationship is so fascinating? Finance requires a solid foundation in math, yes. But finance is also about strong analytical abilities and application of math concepts such as algebra, calculus, statistics in real life business opportunities. Both of my parents are entrepreneurs. 
I grew up with their jewelry company, and I learned so much in the daily operations. That's how very early I learned how important profitability is. And by the way, it still is, especially in my field in technology. Um, and the importance with math and finance, the, this relationship. So now, today, as a financial professional, I focus more on the practical application of business concepts and not um, advanced theories. Okay, now, something cool. 72. 72, the rule of thumb. We call it the rule of 72 in finance. And this shows the best combo between math and finance. So, if you want to know um, and quickly estimate the numbers of years required to double investment at a given annual compound rate of return, 72. You just take 72 divided by, divided by annual, the annual return. Let's take an example. If an investment scheme promises you 8% of annual compound rate of return, you, it will take you exactly 72 divided by 8, so 9 years to double investment. How cool is that? And so this shows the relationship and also the understanding for compound interest in finance. And also, this comes from a logarithmic formula. I won't explain here. Um, something else I wanted to mention here, I wanted to highlight, we all agree that math and finance has a very strong bond, yes. But I wanted to also to highlight that math nurtures reasoning, creativity, critical thinking, communication skills, and also you know, emotional intelligence. So this side of math, the intuition, we need to focus more on that because finance is also personality driven. You need to be not only good at math, but you need to be good at talking to people, make friends, and engage meaningful conversations in a variety of subjects. And by the way, you have a bunch of different jobs in finance from um, cash flow management, corporate management, to uh, investment, inve um, investment services. But that's my pitch for finance. And to summarize everything, this is how I view the relationship between math, finance, and business. Finance is critical in just every business decision, from planning, budgeting, cash flow management, capital structure, cost management, and you know, risk control. But math, again, underlies finance. So now, oops. OK, I know that you all liked my pickup lines. I have a last one for you tonight before I jump into math and technology innovation. Hey, are you a bank loan? Because you have all my interest. <laughs> <laughs> so in my day-to-day -day life, I evaluate businesses to finance from a banking perspective. And again, math is essential and helps in decision making, it's intuitive. You remember, math is a universal language. So for me, it's not only, for me, it's not only about mathematics and you know, um, technology to see, we need to see also the role it plays in technology innovation. How those businesses use math to adapt to the, the new economy, the modern economy we live in. Because this economy is in a constant state of change. So math, we need to apply to evaluate businesses 
and also people behind businesses. I call it, okay, math, we need math because numbers tell the story, we all agree, from financial statements, projections, everything. But we also need to apply our critical thinking. It's a good dose with emotional intelligence and intuition. So what is intuition to me? Intuition to me is the human side of logic. And we need it, we need both sides to assess the amount of information we collect. So something I love to follow from my career and my life, technology and innovation. AI is coming immensely fast and AI has received a lot of attention through the past couple of years. But you know what? AI is not new. Artificial intelligence was coined by Matt John McCarthy in 1955. And with this machine capable of solving problems on behalf of humans, where, you know, before that, humans use their natural intelligence. So the most amazing technologies or AI adoptions we, we made so far are machine learning, for example, a few examples, natural language processing, and also pattern recognition. So first, machine learning, this computer system capable of analyzing stat data and learn from it to be more reliable and efficient. Think of, you know, online personalized recommendation based on your previous purchase. Or Netflix, recommendation on movies you watched. Second, natural language processing. It's a machinery system capable of interpreting and you know, understanding the human natural languages. Think of Alexa or Siri. And finally, the pattern recognition is like training this computer, the machinery again, to recognize an image just like a human. Think of face recognition. AI is not magic. AI is just math again. And AI is not perfect, it's learning from real world data. So it means we need to apply our critical thinking and our intuition to it. But at the end of the day, math leads to innovation. And something cool here, 80%. 80%, by 2021, 80% of emerging technologies will have AI foundations, according to Gardner. So as a conclusion, everybody, I wanted to show you t tonight mm -hmm. that math is absolutely everywhere in every single one of you, way before you realize it. Just like this picture of me when I was 100 year days old, way before my, I had a dream. Thank you. <laughs>